Bingo, we're back. We're back at five. Uh, well, yeah, a little before five. Five minutes at five with Anu Hittel in another special report from the Convention Center. Uh, she's the host of Climate Change Beyond Outrage, and she's reporting to us from the IUCN World Conservation Con Congress at the Convention Center here on the seventh day of the World Conservation Congress. And she has a guest, Joe Moravec, who is in the law, who teaches at the law school in Pace Law School, Pace University Law School, the Elizabeth Howe School of Law in New York City. Uh, welcome, of course, uh, Anu, and welcome, Joe Moravec. Thank you, Aloha, and hello, and Namaskar. And here we are at the uh, World Conservation Congress. It is day seven, and it is really actually quite exciting. But just before we launch into what happened today, I wanted to mention that a few days ago they had updated the red list, which is what IUCN is known for, and we'll talk more about that next week um, on ThinkTech. But one of the things about the red list, which is essentially a barometer of life, is that uh, the giant panda was downgraded on that list, which means it's not as vulnerable as it was. So that's good news, and that shows that conservation works. Now, uh, what's been happening since yesterday is that We've been uh, listening to motions that have been proposed and have gone ahead and been approved. But then there were 14 motions on the floor that were being debated. And today they broke out in contact groups. Some of them had met yesterday. Today they met out in contact groups and uh, have continued to refine the language for those motions. So Jay, one of the things that I think you'll find very exciting is the one motion 007 is the one is the one for elephant uh, elephant ivory to um, to ban and to close markets domestic markets for elephant ivory and that has been one that everybody has wanted to get into the press was actually kicked out of there so we were not allowed in there that was interesting because there were three countries Japan Namibia and South Africa that would like to have it regulated rather than closed so that was interesting. And then I, I sat in on a session to expand marine um, protected areas, essentially. And that was also quite well attended. There were probably about 50 people, 60 people in the room. And it was motion 53. Now, however, I have the student here from Pace University. Joe is here with me today. And they've been doing some really exciting work about uh, proposing some motions. And he's going to tell you all about it right now. So, Joe? Yeah, um, so I represent the Center for Environmental Legal Studies, and we put forward a draft motion this week. Um, under Rule 52, uh, a member can present a motion which is new and urgent. Um, and the motion seeks to push IUCN towards adopting, uh, to encouraging a, a marine protected area, uh, a peace park in the South China Sea. Um, what we're hoping for is that after um, the arbitration, this was decided this summer between the Philippines and China, uh, over that disputed territory that the uh, parties, states parties, could maybe step back from the table and recognize the, the inherent conservation value of the area, not just its strategic value, preserve the area and um, protect what is uh, some of the world's most vital coral resources for our oceans. And so where is that uh, motion at this point? Well, right now we, uh, we're in the midst of waiting to hear where our motion stands. On Sunday, we submitted the motion and uh, last night, the motions committee decided to reject our motion. Um, they recognized that the issue is urgent, but didn't find that we presented new information. So we wrote an appeal uh, this morning. We found out uh, around 9 o'clock this morning the motion had been rejected, and we appealed to the steering committee. Um, a handful of us uh, from the center uh, drafted an appeal really quickly um, and submitted... These are all the, students. Uh, mostly, yeah, all law students. Yeah. And uh, submitted the, the, mo the, uh, the appeal uh, brief at uh, 12.59 this afternoon, uh, one minute ahead of our uh, 1 p.m. deadline. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. The steering committee has it. And uh, we should find out sometime either tonight or uh, early tomorrow. Exciting. So this is really, the students are really working the floor here. It's just, it's wonderful to see. So did you have any other questions at this point of us? Yes. Um, uh, how can I vote on these motions? Why, why can't I vote too? And how about you, Anu? Can you vote on these motions? Well, the members vote on the motions, and you have to be part of the delegations. There are two. There are some uh, organizations with two members per delegation, and some with one. But they all have one vote, correct? Correct. There, are, there is some difference in how many each vote uh, each uh, party has based on uh, who they are. The states' parties have a little bit more than the NGOs. 
um, but everybody has one vote, yes. Right, so uh, I can't really vote unless I'm designated by my organization, East West Center or whichever organization. So, so but the students are on the floor voting. Yes, um, we, we are um, delegates from the Center for Environmental Legal Studies and it's it's our show it's fantastic <laughs> to see them working at it yeah this is great you know international conservation work yeah. but i did say that it was democracy in action a little too soon because i did feel a bit peeved about that media being kicked out of the the one yeah uh, good point yeah motion yeah so democracy in action but you know a little bit not transparent sometimes well tell us what else happened on uh, day number seven and what's going to happen on day number eight so day number eight is actually going to be field trips. We're actually going to get out into the into the wilds of Oahu and see what we can find. Um, and so everyone's taking a break tomorrow. And we, that's why we won't be here tomorrow, but we will be back on Friday when there will be more contact groups of the contact groups, which are where they're discussing these motions and the language for each of these motions. Those are all going through tonight. Uh, late into the night, actually, probably, and then they'll go to field trips tomorrow, and then they'll be doing um, some more contact groups on Friday, and then voting. Yes. Um, actually, we'll be voting on, uh, I think, three motions this afternoon um, that have already worked their way through the contact groups. Um, I just got a, a message a few minutes ago that uh, we vote on those later this afternoon. I don't know which motions. Um, but as you can see, some of these are, are uh, really quick differences, and once they get worked out, we put them up on the floor pretty quickly so yeah so some of them have just a few people in there and it just goes right through and the others like the closure of domestic markets for elephant ivory that's very contentious and so tons of action tons of action uh, tons of action please so, thank joe marvek for us joe marvek is uh, a student i think at yes. the school of law elizabeth Hobbs school of law at pace university in new york city and that's anu hiddle reporting to us she is the host of Climate Change Beyond Outrage here on Think Tech, and she gives these special reports to us from the Convention Center, from the World Conservation Congress, every day she can, here on the seventh day, we'll hear again, I guess, on the ninth day from her. Thank you so much, Anu. Thank you, and people can also follow us on Twitter. Thank okay. you much. Aloha. Right. Thank you. Aloha. Bye-bye.